so I have, you know, it was, it was kind of a challenge uh, deciding what should be the title of this presentation. Uh, I didn't want it to be a pure presentation on, on mixing. I wanted that we are associated with, with a specific industry, which is basically refractory materials. And to look at this whole presentation in light of the uh, mixing in the refractory materials, while we are doing that, we need to know that mixing is, is a very broad, uh, you know, has very broad applications. So while we say mixes for refractories, uh, there are also other mixes which are used as pre-mixers to prepare some of the uh, compositions or the formulations that eventually get into a refractory mixer. So uh, the idea here is that we will be covering all kinds of mixers and we will also, you know, kind of just uh, touch upon the mixers which are commonly used in the refractory industry and it is important to know why they are used in the refractory industry. So with that beginning, uh, yeah, uh, my name is Jayesh Tekchandani and uh, I'm the technical director at Unique Mixers. Uh, we basically manufacture industrial mixing equipment, uh, mixers for liquids, solids and high viscosity materials. Let us first begin with the objectives of this discussion. So primarily we want to discuss the basic concepts of mixing as they would be applicable to the refractory industry. We will highlight the importance of good mixing. We need to understand what is the difference between mechanisms of mixing when you talk about liquids, solids and viscous materials. Study the different types of mixing equipment for all these applications and learn the basis for selection and design of the mixers. Now design of the mixers is a very, very complex and a very, you know, kind of a topic on its own, but we need to know what parameters are to be considered while we are designing the mixers, and we will cover all of them here. The contents of this presentation, we will, as I said, uh, you know, kind of revisit the refractories as an industry, understand the different types of refractory applications, we will have a brief introduction on the subject of mixing. We will discuss mixing of liquids, solids, high viscosity materials. We will look at equipment selection, design and operation. And we will just kind of touch base upon mixer maintenance. Uh, there was a request that we should be discussing mixer maintenance in more detail. We will do that. Uh, you know, probably I have some supporting slides which we could get to if need be but uh, we should be able to answer all questions related to that as well. Refractories. So refractories are primarily technical ceramics and refractories manage industrial process heat, define thermal and mechanical abuse and high temperature attack. Industrial refractories are almost all complex combinations of high melting crystalline solids Carbides, carbon and graphite. I have, I have experts sitting across, uh, you know, uh, as far as refractories is concerned. So uh, definitely uh, if there's anything more uh, you wish to add, you can certainly do that. And, and also correct me along the way if, if there is something that I have missed out on. Let's understand the importance of uh, refractories as a, you know, as a product. So virtually everything that is provided in the advanced society that depends directly or indirectly somewhere in its background on manufacturing processes conducted at high temperatures. The hot manufacturing processes we have include shaping or treatment of metals, ceramics, including glass and cements, electronic materials, fuels, a host of organic and inorganic chemical products and, and many more. Industrial refractories make these hot processes possible and economical when metal containment cannot compete. It would, it would be appropriate to say that refractories are enablers or facilitators of our productivity. Let us also understand what function or duty are these you know, refractories meant to perform. So the most common duty is basically contain high temperatures to erect a solid barrier 
between the hot inside environment of an equipment or a process and the ambient outside. While taking this into consideration, we need to bear in mind that there will also be mechanical loads which need to be accounted for. And there are temperature cycles that we need to go through in the process. Criteria of heat transport apply. In most uses, the refractory must serve as a thermal insulator and less frequently as a conductor of heat. In some areas of application, either electrical resistance or electrical conduction is called for. However, the greatest challenge is hot corrosive fluids. And this is where most metals fail and refractories come to the rescue. Let's also look at, you know, kind of a history of refractory materials. So typically what started as natural rocks and clays, you know, they were adequately serving as refractories for a very long time before carbon bricks were produced in 1863. Uh, basic refractory materials were developed after World War I, you know, from dolomite. In, in around 1950, the three-phase arc furnaces, that development went on and that's when serious demands arose for more sophisticated refractories. Ceramics had now grown substantially from a craft to an applied science. You know, along the way came synthetic industrial carbons, synthetic alumina, synthetic magnesia, zirconia, silica. All said and done, an optimum result can achieve, be achieved by the combination of synthetic and mineral raw materials with creative inputs into processing as well. You know, as we said, creative inputs into processing, that's where mixing is a part of the processing process and we will be discussing it. Just kind of outlined a few refractory mixing applications before we actually get into the depths of, you know, the mixing technology or the mixing kind of mixing equipment available, not just, as I said, not just for refractories, but across industries. So dry molding mixes or running mixes, plastics, moldables for carbon containing and resin bonded blocks, bricks, moldables for pitch bonded mixes, moldables in the form of granulates, refractory castables. Now somebody who's familiar with, with uh, refractories knows that, you know, each of these have to be processed in a very different manner. And, you know, part of the processing is also mixing and how the mixing needs to be different for all of these applications. Again, this is, this is, you know, primarily based on, um, what technologies are available and we will just kind of look at, uh, the different refractory mixing applications which must ensure that specific properties for shaping the batch and finished product are obtained. So we talked about dry molding mixes or ramming mixes. I mean, these applications after compacting, there should be a dense structure with a few pores. In this case, the mixing objective is to ensure that all fines are well mixed with the coarse grain. This is accomplished by first charging the coarse grain in the mixer and then wetting it with the slip. Next one adds the fine grains. When it comes to plastics, a high softness is obtained if processing them by way of an extrusion process. Say for example, in tap holes, uh, you know, you should be able to apply them easily. In such cases, mixing means to exert a shearing force and to knead the mixture well. You know, the tap hole clay mixer that we have supplied, that's pretty much a Sigma mixer or a Sigma kneader where we are exerting a shear force and we are ensuring that the kneading takes place. Uh, refractory castables, uh, well, you are all familiar with the intensive mixer and the intensive mixers are commonly used for standard dense refractory castables. Uh, for heat insulating refractory castables, uh, when they are to be prepared and mixed, that is done in a gravity mixer or these gravity mixers are also called as tumbling mixers. Uh, and this is to ensure that you prevent rubbing or friction of the lightweight aggregates. Uh, I have seen uh, these uh, uh, gravity mixers at, at your cut me unit. In fact, we have also substituted uh, the gravity mixer by a plowshare mixer uh, for one of the applications there. 
moldables for carbon containing and resin bonded bricks. In such cases, the carbon must be sufficiently added to the oxide grain. In these cases, mixing means to wet the grain with resin solutions before adding of the fines and graphite. The mixing in such cases is to be carried out below 60 degrees and you do not want the temperature uh, to build up. Okay. Uh, pitch bonded, yeah, that's where the mix mixtures are to be prepared at temperatures up to 180 degrees C. So that needs to be taken care of. And moldables in the form of granulates. So raw materials like zirconia with stabilizers are difficult to work. In such cases, the mixer is required to make a stable granulate out of a powdery raw material. And then this granulate is easy to work with. We may require some organic solvents for the mixing and granulation of process. And the, the process needs to be done in a controlled atmosphere. So such mixers are designed for vacuum operation. And after the wet mixing is completed, this solvent is again recovered using vacuum and the mixture is dried from the granulation wetness back to the pressing wetness. So these are some typical refractory mixing applications uh, that exist and for each of them, you know, the mixing process uh, has to be defined uh, so that you get the right mix. Also, let us uh, look at what typical challenges one encounters when you talk about refractories. So handling mixtures comprising of many raw materials. You know, today's formulation can have six, seven, eight, ten, you know, as many different raw materials that go on to make uh, one uh, refractory mix. There could be variation in physical properties of the material, such as bulk density, and particle size. Typically, particle size plays a very important role. You have you know, in your applications, coarse, middling, and the fines. And uh, handling these materials during mixing is, is very important. Most of these materials are abrasive in nature. And an abrasive material definitely gives you high maintenance as far as the equipment is concerned. Uh, avoiding segregation post-mixing operation. You, know, you have density differences. You have differences in the particle size. So those are some of the challenges when it comes to uh, mixing in the refractories. Fine, from your subject to my subject, mixing. What is mixing? So mixing is the process of thoroughly combining different materials to produce a homogeneous mix. In previous times, refractories were manufactured with only a few grain sizes. You know, in a batch, so coarse, medium, and, and, and a fine grain. Today, we have mixtures of more than 10 different raw materials. These are required for special purpose refractory products in order to achieve the desired properties of the product. Thus, mixing operations must ensure the specific properties for shaping the batch and the finished product are obtained. So that's, that's where mixing becomes extremely, extremely important. And what happens if you don't mix well? Well, in, in refractories, any installed refractory system tends to obey the rule of the weakest link. And this can apply not only to an inferior batch or lot, but even to a single masonry unit within a lot. So, you know, if, you know the, the quantum of things going wrong from the smallest level to the highest level does matter. And a critical refractory installation is not superior until all of it is superior. Um, it's very important. The meticulous attention needs to be paid while uh, processing uh, and developing advanced refractory products. You know, if coming across the mixing industry, I mean, these are numbers which I have almost more than five years back. The cost of poor mixing five years back was estimated to be 100 billion US dollars. You know, that's the annual cost. So that's that's what makes mixing so very important. Let's understand the reasons for poor mixing. The first reason is that there is inadequate and inaccurate definition of the mixing objective. So traditionally, people feel you know if I have to mix something, I just need to put two things in a vessel, you know, stir it turn it upside down, probably put a spoon, you know, put something, just take them back and forth and mixing is done. 
Okay. You need to clearly define what is the objective that you are looking to achieve from the mixing. Lack of understanding of material characteristics. Again, extremely, extremely important. You know, when you talk about material characteristics, you talk about the material properties such as uh, density, the flowability, the particle size distribution. Um, you could talk about the abrasiveness, the the cohesiveness, the adhesiveness. Uh, there, there are many, many properties. Some some products uh, okay, may not be very common in the refractory, but uh, you have materials, powders, which could be explosives and uh, you need to handle them carefully. So you need to understand the material characteristics. Incorrect selection of mixer. Uh, again, this is this is something which probably happens less often in the refractory industry, but it is very common in the chemical industry where uh, people, you know, just pick up any mixer and say, okay, let's try this process on this mixer. And if it works, well, we've got the right mixer. In the refractories, because the applications are, are so specific, so critical, uh, you know, it comes with its own set of challenges. The kind of equipment that are commonly used in the refractory industry are well established. Uh, but there is always an opportunity to improve upon and uh, we need to work upon selection of the mixer. Incorrect scale up techniques. Again, uh, there could be applications where we are able to produce a certain mix to a certain degree of homogeneity in the laboratory. However, when it comes to scale up in the production, we are not able to match the results that we are achieving in our lab. Uh, and that could be because of the wrong scale up technique. So we'll, we'll briefly touch base upon you know, when you when you scale up, what is what are the considerations that you need to have? Above all, uh, there's limited knowledge of mixing equipment design and parameters. So one of our objectives in this in this discussion would be, you know, to share uh, the basic knowledge of mixing equipment design and the parameters. Um, some of my favorite quotes: Okay, mixing is an art and a science. So, so it's not just a science; it is also an art, and uh, it comes with with experience. Uh, very important, a mixer is no longer a generic production tool, but a critical and a decisive business tool. I will give you an example, uh, you know, as we move forward in this, prediction, in this presentation as to how, you know, it is a decisive business tool.